Tonight, you must replicate the following dish. Colville Bay oysters prepared three ways. First, we have a Japanese-inspired preparation, a sake poached oyster with Asian pear slaw with a perfectly shelled lobster claw. I have absolutely no experience with oysters. It's very out of my comfort zone. The next oyster is served raw, but topped with an intricate mignonette, champagne jelly, red tobiko, and chervil. Feels like there's like three dozen things going on in each little teeny tiny oyster. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff. The third and final oyster is our take on oyster Rockefeller with bechamel, spinach puree, sauteed oyster mushroom, and a blend of cheese and toasted panko breadcrumbs. This challenge is going to be quite difficult. Not only does it have to taste good, but the oysters have to look as gorgeous as we see them. You will have 35 minutes to complete this challenge. When your time starts, I'm feeling pretty terrified about this pressure test. I'm gonna fight as hard as I've ever fought in my life for this. I'm not going home. Good hustle, Jen, good hustle. There's so many ways that you could prepare oysters. One of those ways is a poached Japanese preparation. And they need to be very, very careful with that. Just kind of going with the flow here. I don't want to see them dropping an oyster into a roaring pot of boiling sake. It kills the flavor of the sake and it will destroy the oyster. Nice. True redemption is getting back into a pressure test and coming out alive. Moving on. This pressure test is the most important thing I've ever done in my life. Kagan, how are you? I think I uh, kind of embarrassed myself a little bit in that last challenge, so I'm looking for redemption number two. You opened a lot of oysters. Yep. But only a few of them were successful. Um, I'm gonna learn from that. I think the biggest challenge here is really the pressure. So it's gonna come down to who performs best under pressure today. One thing is for certain, you are a fighter. You don't give up. Thank you. Can't wait to see what you do. They also have to prepare a raw oyster and there's nothing simple about that task. A beautiful classic mignonette, which is usually done with red wine, shallots, very clean, very fresh. You gotta make sure the mignonette does not have too much acidity, it has to be perfectly balanced. Lots of potential for mistakes here. Does it smell good, Becky? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Becky. Hi. How are you doing? All right. First pressure test. Nervous? Uh, not really. Not really? So, are you confident? Yeah. But have you ever cooked an oyster before? Uh, no. No? And you're not nervous at all? No. <laughs> Cold as ice. I tell you, don't be nervous, but you should always care. Remember that. Yeah. All right? You're a savage, way Becky. Go, way to go. You're a savage, Becky. I want the judges to know that I can handle the pressure. I do have emotions, I just don't show them. Ten minutes! You have ten minutes left! The Rockefeller is everyone's favorite, including me. First of all, get a nice, rich bechamel sauce with spinach. Very careful, get that taste right. Tray, get that in the oven right now. You are going to broil it inside a hot oven. Find the next gear here, guys. Jan, you're a machine, yes. Jan, you're a machine. One of the key elements of that poached Japanese preparation is the lobster claw. Poach until it's just cooked, and then the careful procedure of gently cracking it and removing it whole from its claw. Yes. Here comes your moment, Becky. Oh, Becky. Hi there, Jen. Hi, Chef Michael. Sorry I'm not looking at you. I've never uh, done this before. So Very this gently be with it. Deep breath. Gently, gently. Yes! yes! Girl! 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 <laughs> you deserve that. Thank you. So I'll let you carry on. Good luck. Add a girl, add a girl. I am my biggest obstacle years ago. I had the chance to go to cooking school and I didn't. I just didn't go because I thought, why would they want someone like me? But I'm done standing in my own way. Two minutes, you have two more minutes left. Two minutes, 
Get those oysters plated. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, Becky, yeah, Becky. It's so important to get the right ingredients on the right oyster. Kenyon has a tendency of forgetting things. Look at the oyster. He shucked the most, but he forgot to release them. Let's go, Kagan. I need to take my time with this. If I rush it, oyster's gonna look terrible. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, head down! guys. I look at my dish and I realize that my mushroom is out of place. That mushroom not being in the Rockefeller oyster might send me home. The judges will now taste each home cook's oysters three ways. Jen? Hi. Presentation is not bad. The lobster claw came out whole. Delicious oyster. Thank you. Good vinaigrette dressing, and the umami of the seaweed is coming through nicely. Nicely done. Thank you. Jen. Hello, Chef Alvin. I'm going to try the Oyster Rockefeller because this is a classic and one of my favorites. The oyster is perfectly cooked. The mushroom should be cooked a little bit more thoroughly okay. because we want to get that different texture. It's there, but it's not doing its work. Okay. In my humble opinion, the most difficult oyster is this one, the raw oyster, because you have nowhere to hide. Mm. Wow. You see that? Mm hmm What is that? That's peppercorn. It's a lot of peppercorn. Remember, cooking is all about those fine details. The pepper is too coarse. It's actually taking over the entire flavor of the oyster. Hello, Kagan. Hello, Chef Michael. Looks like that oyster mushroom jumped ship. It was supposed to be hanging out over there. That's right. The lobster is cooked very, very nicely indeed. Lovely light dressing, works well together. It's not a perfect dish. I hope you've done enough to stay here. Good luck. So, the raw oyster. The jelly is nice, it's intact. The shallots, they're perfect. Thank you. The pepper, the jelly, they complement one another beautifully. Wonderful. Thank you. Even though a component was missing, the oyster was cooked perfectly. The sauce tasty and was rich, and that's what Rockefeller should be. The unshakable Becky. It looks like you carbon copied the plate that we showed you. Well, let's see how your raw oyster tastes. The mignonette is expertly done. Good heat, the peppercorns are finely ground. It complements that oyster beautifully. Sauce, good flavor, well seasoned. Right combinations of the cheese, the breadcrumb, and finally that mushroom. This oyster Rockefeller, it's one of the best I've ever had. Wow, Very well done. <laughs> Thank you. That's it, Becky. Oh, Becky. Becky, you were the only one that had that oyster in the grasp of the pincers of the lobster, as was shown. Fresh, crisp, and crunchy, the way it should be. Nice seasoning on the lobster claw, but it is, in my opinion, slightly underdone. You're not making it easy. I feel safe right now because everyone had ups and everyone had downs on their dishes. This next replication challenge will require precision and a delicate hand. 
today, you'll be making... a chocolate sphere. Crap. A pristine globe of perfectly tempered dark chocolate. This isn't just a dessert. It is a work of art, and it's much more complex than it appears. This perfect chocolate ball, shiny, sparkling, and you want these hands to make something that pretty and delicate? You might want to get a little closer. My stomach is just not. I bake, but creating this perfect glossy orb is so far out of my comfort zone. What you see now is about to disappear. Chef Michael begins pouring a bubbling hot caramel sauce over the chocolate orb. It's really mesmerizing just watching it melt and fall apart like that. Inside that dome is a whole different marvel. A pistachio cake surrounded by honeycomb and topped with brulee figs. Have a taste. There's so many elements going into this thing. This is just going to be crazy. OK, now please go to your stations. This is the hardest pressure test ever. I really, really have to pull out all the stops. Chrissy's strengths are, you know, baking. It's something that comes naturally to her. She's definitely one of the worst people to be in the challenge against. You only have 70 minutes to replicate this intensely difficult dessert. And we are expecting perfection in taste and presentation. The cook with the wicker dish will see the MasterChef Canada marathon and just short of the finish line. I have to make it past this pressure test. I can't go home now. Home cooks, are you ready? Yes, Chef. Your 70 minutes starts now. Let's go, Let's guys. Let's go, guys. You got this, guys. Just one thing at a time. Talk about going from one extreme to another. In the last challenge, Chrissy and Josh were team members. Now they're adversaries. So the first thing they have to do is temper the chocolate. The reason we temper chocolate is so that they can work with it and it'll hold that spherical shape. They need to bring it up to a temperature about 114 degrees. Come on. If you overheat it, it could split and become very, very grainy. To me, baking is like rocket science, very measured and precise. There's so many things that could go wrong. You're about 10 minutes in, guys. Thank you. The chocolate will take a little bit of time to melt. So in the meantime, I'm going to start my cake. The next step is a pistachio cake. And what I'm looking for is a light, fluffy Genoese sponge cake. I'm trying to get that cake in the oven, so I'm just sifting the flour, and then I can bring it all together. I've baked so many cakes. I know that this is something I could kind of do with my eyes closed, almost. Good job, Chrissy. Where do you get that in? Breeze, breeze, breeze. This pressure test is my worst nightmare. But my wife told me before I got here just to take a deep breath and settle my hands and my heart. It's super important to have that little voice in my head saying, you can do it. How's it looking, Josh? It's looking fluffy, just like my beard. <laughs> 45 minutes. You only have 45 minutes left. Good job, Chrissy. I pulled my chocolate off the heat. This is the tricky part happening now. This is too hot. I have to make sure it's at the proper temperature. Josh is checking the temperature on his chocolate now. I'm trying to get it to 88, 89. Now I'm putting handfuls of cold chocolate into it to bring that temperature down. So close. This is definitely the most precise and exact challenge we have ever given to home cooks. You're good. Yeah, we're good. Perfect. I'm good to go. All right. What they're going to do is take that tempered chocolate, pour it into those molds. All right, baby, come on. They shape them so there's an even coating of chocolate inside. Even professional chefs often make mistakes with the chocolate spheres. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, baby, come on, baby. I'm trying to coat every part of this ball. Come on. I'm shaking it like a maniac right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. It's good. Finally, I get it to a point where I like it. I sprint to the kitchen, put it in the fridge to cool off. Josh has finished his sphere. Let's go, Josh. Way to move, bud. 35 minutes. You're halfway through this challenge. 
<sighs> Her sphere's not working. I'm realizing that my chocolate has cooled down too much. It's not spreading inside the sphere. It's starting to set as I'm moving it around. Why? Chrissy is in deep water right now. All that's going through my head is you're done. You're done. All right. <laughs> it's ugly, but it's a dome. Five minutes! You only have five minutes left. You have to get those chocolates out now. Yeah. Five minutes left, and now I'm messing around with my globe. I'm starting to turn it. I'm trying to pry it open very nicely and gently. You have to have very steady hands. Now I'm kind of holding my breath. Oh, my God. Oh, look at that. Look, but he still has one half to release. Yes, Joshy. You got it? Oh, baby. Yes. Oh. Wow. You're giving me Good goosebumps, job. man. Good job, Josh. Good job, Josh. This is risky now. She's got to Very. try and get that balloon unstuck from the edge of the chocolate and then remove it from that sphere without Man. damaging it. There you go. Awesome, oh, Chrissy. Let's go, oh, Chrissy. Oh, I made a hole. There you go, Chrissy. If everything else on the plate is great, maybe, just maybe, I can get away with my lumpy, ugly sphere. One minute! Remember, everything has to be out in one minute. Come on, one wow. minute. On, Don't guys. forget the combo sauce. One minute. Guys, you make sure you get every component on the plate. OK, come on, come on, come on. Here goes Josh. He's motoring through it. Come on, paintbrush. The title is so close, they can taste it right now. Come on, guys. Ten, nine, nine eight, eight go seven, six, six, five, four, three, two, two. One, hands off! Hot damn, that was amazing. Wow. I'm very proud of you. Good job. Thank you. Hi there, Josh. Chef, that was an amazing challenge to watch. How did you feel when you finally had those molds release from the chocolate? Definitely happy that it came out one piece. Well, the tempering of the chocolate, I think, was pretty decent because it has that nice, lustrous shine to it. Now, the moment of truth. This dessert needs to reveal what lies beneath it. It has to be that perfect thickness in order for that magic to happen. Oh, yes. Right on cue. A real showpiece. I want to try a little of that sponge toffee. In my mind, nothing wrong with the taste. I would just like to have seen it a little bit more fluffed up. But I appreciate the fact that you did it twice to try and perfect it. Thank Good you, luck. Hey, Josh. Chef. The outside. It's important, but that's only the face. The inside, that's also very important, right? So, uh, how's your inside? The cake? Just a little bit dry. But I love figs. You did a great job cooking them. The butter, the seasoning, it just adds an extra goodness into this dessert. Were you surprised you were able to pull this off? Yes, Chef, you know, being a big guy, not used to little dainty things like that. I was a little worried I'd manhandle it too much, but I was super happy to, to get it all together for you. Well, very nicely done. Thanks, Chef. Chrissy. Hello, Chef. <laughs> you wear your emotions on your sleeve. I can see it. <laughs> a little bit. So, Chrissy, you did not hit the mark because this was a replication challenge. Yes. It's not perfect, but this was not easy what we asked you to do. Let's see what happens. There are a lot of opportunities within this sphere for you to really shine. Look at that, Chrissy. That's beautiful. Very inviting. That cake is perfection. It is perfectly made. You hit all of those notes. Beautiful. 
Hey there, Chrissy. Hello, Chef. Obviously, the chocolate dome, you got it done, not without its flaws. Yeah. The tempering wasn't quite right, but you never gave up. Nope. Let's try the sponge toffee. Mm. Has great structure, taste is very good. In my opinion, textbook. Thank you, Chef. Figs cut through the richness of the sweetness of this dessert. It certainly wasn't perfect on the outside, mm -mm. but it was pretty on the inside. Well done. Thank you, Chef. My idea of the perfect chocolate experience is the dark chocolate brownie with handmade vanilla bean ice cream. It is pure decadence. When I think of my favorite chocolate dessert, I think of this. Creamy white chocolate creme brulee. When you break into it, it's very important to get the right combination of sweet, crispy, and smooth. I'm a fan of milk chocolate, and it's the star of this mouth-watering classic with a complicated twist. A silky, smooth milk chocolate mousse with the fresh passion fruit center. You have to make it correctly for this beautiful filling to flow out. These are our favorite chocolate desserts, and you will be making all three of them. Lynn, you look a bit stunned. To make three all at the same time, that's almost mission impossible. Sabrina, how do you feel about making three desserts today? Call me crazy, but I'm excited. <laughs> Should be interesting. Sabrina is such a tough competitor because she's like a pit bull. She just doesn't give up. Please come up and have a taste of what it is that we expect from you. I'm a little bit scared because Lynn has done a lot of replication challenges and nailed them. It has to be done a certain way. It's very regimented, just like the military. Please go to your stations. Lucky guys. I'm really happy I'm up in the gallery. They have to make three desserts. This is crazy. You will have just 90 minutes. So use your time well. This is the cat fight that will end all cat fights. This is a fight to the finale. Lynn's not taking my place in the finale. Not now. Game on, girlfriend. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. Your time starts now. But well, this is a very difficult challenge. We're talking about three different, very intricate chocolate desserts. <sighs> Definitely toughest challenge in MasterChef Canada history. I think professional pastry chefs would struggle. I want that chef coat really bad. I want to go head to head with David in the finals. Lynn is certainly a very strong contender in this competition. She scares me. Her speed, I've never seen anybody that fast. I came here to be in the finale. This has to turn out perfect. First thing I do, I get my brownies going. Those things have to bake and cool down fast. Both of them are doing the brownie first. I am expecting that chocolate brownie to be soft, moist, and mouth-watering. Creme brulee may seem like a very simple dessert of egg, cream, sugar, and white chocolate, but to get it perfect is very difficult. First of all, when you're doing the water bath, you want to bring the temperature up gently because if the water's too hot, it's going to become scrambled egg. Uh, a little more time. 60 minutes! You have 60 minutes left! Sabrina. Hi, Chef. You were sounding pretty confident at the top of this cook. Is, yes. that, is that confidence level still there? Didn't come here to finish third. I came here to finish first. Is there any one of these three desserts that is going to be the most challenging for you? The chocolate mousse, Chef. If there's any air bubbles or gaps in that sphere, there it goes. Tricky. Yes, Chef. Well, I'll let you go, because I can see you're under the pressure of this cook. I'm in the zone, Chef. The chocolate mousse is a very technical dessert to get going. It certainly is. You'll have to take the passion fruit, and you'll have to freeze it into a half sphere. And then you're going to put your wonderful light chocolate mousse. 
and then your passion fruit inside of the chocolate mousse. That goes into the freezer, the whole thing sets. It's actually one of the most complicated desserts to do. It's very tricky. Ooh, time is a ticking. I'm feeling the burn. I want this so bad. I'm whipping my cream, my mousse. Cream is curdling. Oh, my god. My whipped cream is over whipped, and it curls. This could be my last cook in the master chef kitchen. I'm scared to death. So, Lynn, how are you? Good. I was doing well. Then my cream started to curdle. What happened there? It was room temperature. Usually, I put my cream in a metal bowl, and I refrigerate it. I'll start fresh. I'm just going to chill it. No biggie. I'm saying those words, but I'm freaking out. So you think you're going to be going up against David? Absolutely. People have not seen me coming this whole competition. You think you've been silently waiting for this opportunity? Yes, sir. Silent but deadly. Good luck. Thank you. 15 minutes. You have 15 minutes left. You better be thinking about plating soon. I haven't put the mousse in the mold for that chocolate round thing. I'm very worried about Lynn's chocolate mousse. It looks a little thin. It's not going to set properly. The tension in this kitchen is incredible. It's like truly like a horse race. These two ladies are tough. Either one is going to be scary in the finale. Doing the top of my creme brulee, for me, is a cinch. Getting a proper coat on takes multiple applications of sugar. You have to fill in those gaps. I don't like, you know, what Sabrina's doing. You know, she's adding sugar to it, which means she didn't get an even consistent layer to begin with. And you're now patching it up. If you burn it, it becomes very bitter. Five minutes! You have five minutes left. And remember, it's a replication. But taste is king. My brownie is coming out really well. It's nice and dense. It's also cutting really clean edges. That looks about right. Two minutes! You have two minutes left! That doesn't work. You know, desserts need to look absolutely beautiful. One shake of the hand, one misstep with piping out that chocolate, and you've got to start that plate again. Ten, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! At this point, I'm thinking I got this. Sabrina's good at plating. Lynn is good at taste. If this goes to the person that makes the prettiest plate, Sabrina's going to win it. Now? we will taste all your chocolate desserts, and this will determine which one of you will advance to the finale. Sabrina. Chef. What was the hardest about the creme brulee? The burnt sugar without taking it too burnt and making sure it's the right thickness. The most important thing is that tap. And if you hear that crack of the shell, then the sugar is done right, OK? If it doesn't crack, it's too thick. Here, so let's crack. Let's dig into this. That's very nice. It looks velvety smooth. It looks, OK? The egg and the cream, perfect. It's smooth, it's velvety. As I bite into that burnt sugar, it was not even. Parts that were thick, and there was parts that were not so thick. But overall, good job. Great job. Lynn! It looks pretty perfect to me. I like that crack because it's kind of like thin ice. Sugar coat felt very, very even, and that's what I was looking for. Inside, you have a nice combination, nice mixture of the white chocolate with the egg mix. That is close to perfection. Great dish. Thank you, chef. Well, certainly at first glance, it looks like a very, very good replication. The cut on your chocolate brownie looks very precise and clean. Let's try it. Mm. 
the ice cream, I think, is wonderful. Beautiful consistency, has that hint of vanilla. The brownie, I get that dark chocolate richness. I just find this a touch on the dense side and I, I, it, I'm concerned that it may have needed just a little bit more moisture. But a very, very good replication. Well done. Thanks, Chef. Lynn, how are you feeling? I'm very proud of myself right now. At first glance, I do think your cutting of the chocolate brownie is uh, less precise, a little ragged around the edge there. And that was the easiest aspect of this dish to pull off. But in the words of my esteemed colleague, taste is king. That ice cream is spot on. The chocolate brownie, delicious, soft, moist. All in all, a very good brownie. Thank you, chef. This is not going to be easy. Thank you. Me and Lynn are both strong players. We're neck and neck. And now we're down to the final dessert. I have to say, this looks very elegant. You think you achieved the liquid center that we're looking for? Yes, yeah, chef. Well, let's see what happens. That is a sight of beauty. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. Fantastic. Thank you, Chef. The splash on the top, Lynn, looks a little messy. Yes, Chef. If the center of this dome does not have that liquid passion fruit, it's not gonna be good for you. To be honest, I don't know what the inside is going to look like. <laughs> oh. Wow. Let's see how it tastes. You did it. You've just made our job a lot more difficult in picking who will be in the finale. In front of you are the tools and the beautiful fresh fish that you'll need to replicate Chef Kimura's Snapper Uzusukuri platter. At the end of this first round, the quality and accuracy of your knife cuts will be judged by the master himself. Wow. The four cooks who do the best job will go straight to the gallery and escape cooking in the second round. I got this, I got this. Are you ready to wield your knives like a master? Yes, Chef! Yes. Your 15 minutes starts now. Okay, let's do this thing. This is true craftsmanship, to be a sashimi chef. This is not just about speed, this is about precision and quality. You know, not simple. I actually spent some time in a local fish market in Halifax, filleting fish by the dozens. So I have to follow my instincts. Each of these home cooks is really concentrating on removing that first fillet. They want to make sure that there's no flesh left on the bone. Hatching the knife and the bone, meat between them. I just got to cut through this bone. Medic. Taya has already cut herself. That's not a great start. I'm moving extremely fast. I really want to get up to the balcony, but I'm having trouble removing the rest of the fillet from the collar. So I start hacking at the bone. Not the fish fillet, the bone. <laughs> May is moving through that fish very, very quickly, but Jeremy, Jeremy is moving at a very intense speed right now. Jeremy has got his fillet off first. He's ready to start slicing. Five minutes have passed. You have 10 more minutes left to get those razor precision slices. Okay, beautiful cuts. It's very difficult to get those paper thin, translucent slices of sashimi. Yes, it's all in one smooth action. My sashimi is not looking awesome. It's not cute. Every time I pull my blade through, it's falling apart. 
Watching Chef Kimura, he was nice and slow, so I need to cut my sashimi slowly and properly. <sighs> calm down, calm down, calm down. Everyone right now looks like they're on track, except one home cook. April Lee looks like she's behind everyone right now. She's gone back down to grab the other filet. I have damaged that first filet a little bit. Now this is gonna be a big setback. I'm extremely nervous. The clock is ticking away. I'm not sure that I can pull this off. This season, Canada's newest master chef will go home with the ultimate Mila Chef's culinary package, valued at over $18,000, including a new Mila professional gas range and range hood, premium Mila stainless steel refrigerator, and Mila dishwasher. World-renowned sushi master, Chef Shigeo Kimura, Beautiful snapper. schooled the top 11 in the art of sashimi wow. for the first of three grueling culinary battles. Medic. Where the top four plates secure safety on the balcony. This is going to be a big setback. But April Lee has some catching up to do. The clock is ticking away, and I'm thinking just keep cutting, keep working on my tray. I don't see he's cutting it correctly, but who knows? You may get something nice. You only have three more minutes left, come on! You need to be plating now. You know what I like about Jeremy? Like Chef Kamura, he looks at the fish, looking at the angles. He's already seeing the slices before he even slices it. I'm doing the traditional Japanese technique of cutting fish. You start cutting an angle, and to finish the cut, you make sure that your knife is at 90 degrees. What is this guy at? Wow. I want to show Chef Kamura that I can do it too. One minute, only one more minute! Get it on the plate. Now it's just trying to make it look prettier. Wow, Jeremy's already plated. And Andrew, too. Wow. wow. He has lots of confidence. I'm so nervous about time that plating skills go out the window for me. My fingers are shaking. 30 seconds left. Come on. I want to see perfect replication. Hope it's good enough. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Three, two, one. Hands up! <laughs> wow. I look around and I do notice some pretty nice plates. I see some really nice long cuts of fish that aren't as jagged like mine. But I know I'm no sushi master, so I'm proud that I'm presenting this dish. Looking at my dish, I just feel like it's a little bit sloppy. I know my chances for making up onto the gallery for this challenge are pretty slim. Hi, chefs. A little bit jagged. Yes. Very. Chef. It is nice. A little tighter. Look how thin that is. Very, very what beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, chef. Tay. This is the first time? First time, wow. yeah. It is very nice. Jagged pieces here. But yes, Chef. A bit of inconsistency. So the most important thing is every slice is the same size. Andrew. Andrew. One of the wow. first to finish. It's like paper. Yeah. Tried my best. Very thin. Jeremy. Hey, chef. Whoa, Jeremy. He's so fast. He's faster than anybody else. <laughs> I tried to use the technique where you finish the cut That's straight cut nice. down. Yes. Yes, Chef. Excellent job.